Coming up on Tech News Today, HP decides the computer is no longer personal, so they're selling the entire division. IBM creates a brain chip, and Windows 8 secrets revealed. All that and more coming up. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Tech News Today is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. is Tech News Today for Thursday, August 18th, 2011. Tech News Today is brought to you by New Tech, makers of the new TriCaster 850. Find out more by visiting newtech.com or watching the amazing transitions on this show. <laughs> and like Money Wipe. <laughs> Welcome to Tech News Today. I'm Tom Merritt. I'm Sarah Lane. I'm Maya Zaktar. I'm Jason Howell. I wish I had a uh, preparation for I that. Know, I know. I put something didn't awesome give you up enough there. Uh, heads up. <laughs> this is a show we kick around HP buying or getting rid of its PC business today. That's, uh, wow. You know, August is a dead zone for news mostly. For this week. But then when news happens, it just really happens, right? So, so last week you we know, had, we got Mo Motor Rugel. That, that was Monday, right? That was Monday. Okay, that was and this then we week. we had a vast dead zone until today uh, when HP announced that it is, in fact, seeking strategic alternatives for its personal systems group. Can you guys believe that? It, that sounds like it's not that big a deal, but that's actually pretty huge. Yeah, strategic the personal systems group isn't something small. Strategic alternatives is code for we want to sell some stuff. Uh, so they, they could split it up into a bunch of different things. They could sell it off to one person. They could spin it off as its own company. Personal systems group is the computer part of the business. They do more than just that, but the desktops, the laptops, uh, and WebOS. So they're going to be like IBM now, so HP will not be doing any more consumer electronics. We're not going to be seeing any... They still do printers. They'll be doing printers. They okay. kept the printers is a different div division, and that's Stan. But first. laptops, they're going to be just basically be in the enterprise world, because they're also picking up a company called Autonomy, which does... What does Autonomy do? Uh, Autonomy is a, uh, is a company that does enterprise-level uh, structured and unstructured database searching uh, and data mining. Yeah. So it's, it's good, en in other words, good enterprise stuff. The, that's going to help HP in becoming a solutions provider. Uh, HP essentially going IBM here, saying, you know what, we want to sell off our ThinkPad division, our Lenovo. We need to find somebody to take that. Uh, and we're going to focus on on being an enterprise company uh, and and doing our stuff in the cloud. Well, the big difference, though, when IBM did it, their ThinkPads were still pretty successful and laptops weren't like what they are now. I mean, like every laptop now is... It's not that much of a difference. Actually, uh, I think the it, HP laptops and, and desktops I mean, they're, are very successful. They're HP's doing the well, top seller. I, 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 don't, I don't know. I mean, this is a changing market right now in the PC space We just talked entirely. yesterday about how HP's website is like the number two retail website. And there are certain in, theories the on that, States. too. Well, but. yeah, but, but it, it doesn't get that way by being, you know, a bad business. The problem is the margins are, are so thin. So for a company as big as HP, they're making $500 million on the personal systems group. That is not bad. But it is the the lowest uh, earnings of any of their divisions. Well, that's not the only news. Web OS, they're killing it. They just bought it from Palm huh. so they could just kill it. They're not going to be supporting the touchpad anymore. Not supporting. They're not going to be they developing will, the touchpad anymore. They didn't anymore. buy it no, to no, kill here's, it. Here's what they said. They will discontinue operations for Web OS devices, specifically the touchpad and Web OS phones. HP will continue to explore options to optimize the value of Web OS software going forward. In fact, Josh Topolsky over at uh, This Is My Next has a source from inside HP saying that they just had an all-hands meeting. Uh, and in the meeting, uh, WebOS GBU VP Stephen DeWitt made it clear that HP intends to continue to work on WebOS and likely intends to license it. To whom? I guess to Who would manufacturers. Yeah. There was a direct question about licensing it to HT or Samsung, and uh, VP Todd Bradley pointed out that to date, WebOS is designed to work on a single set of silicon, Qualcomm, and that many potential licensees would likely want to see WebOS support other chipsets, but he didn't elaborate on potential partners. So part of that licensing may be, you know what? We just need to make it work on other chipsets, and then we'll, we'll, we'll give it out to other people. But we don't know who those people are right now because it only uh, executes on Qualcomm for now. Yeah, HTC and Samsung are always the usual suspects because right now they support, like, every operating system. So why not one more? Uh, they want to have the biggest Nokia market. is not going to take WebOS. No, probably not. Nokia decided <laughs> Rim's that. not going to take WebOS. Maybe. 
They tried QNX. Why not go ahead and use something that works with web standards? I guess it's a small possibility. Apple's not going to take WebOS. They, I could see Apple trying to get the patents for what some of this LG? stuff. What about LG? LG, we've talked about a long time ago. I don't know why LG wouldn't do it because they've wanted to compete with Samsung for so long, and they Samsung has its own operating system, and LG doesn't. So this would be a nice little play for that. But I still think the patents for Apple is actually where this should be because they have the they have some really interesting patents on notification systems. And even with the new iOS 5 coming out, that notification system is a little bit better, but they can have a lock on that by buying up some of this WebOS stuff. I do think uh, that this idea of, you know, we're, we're looking for ways to exploit WebOS. At first, I thought that means they're going to sell it separately from the personal systems group to somebody uh, for parts. You know, somebody's going to buy it for patents. But this, this Josh Topolsky uh, leak if this is on the up and up, which I, I believe it must be, uh, implies that, no, they want to keep working on WebOS. They just, they just think it's been a failure, and they, they want to change their tune on it. Here's a couple of quotes from Leo Apothecker in their earnings call today. Uh, he said, WebOS would require significant investments over the next five years, generating risk without clear rewards. Well, that makes it sound like they're selling it for parts, like nobody would want this. Later on, in answer to a question, he said, regarding the future of WebOS, we are looking at all of our strategic options regarding the software. The software has been received very well. Everyone likes it. We will be looking at all possible business models from licensing to any other possibility to look at how to extract value from WebOS. And do you think they're going to just continue, continue developing WebOS just so they can support it for the years to come? Because they still they just put out the touchpad. They cut the prices fairly recently. There's going to be a bunch of people out there who have bought these devices and hoping there's support in the background. Is that why they're keeping WebOS around in, in any which way? Or I think the reason they're keeping WebOS around is that anybody who would want to buy the personal systems group wants to buy a personal systems group that can make tablets. Uh, and they want to show, hey, we're in that game. We may not be very far into it, but, mm -hmm. but we at least have the ability to do it. Because that's, that's, you know, mo mobile systems is the big growth opportunity. Desktops and PCs are not. So th this is the sweetener in the deal. It just seems like a gamble for any company to go out to go to WebOS when Android is available and free. For, and that has such penetration and app development. It seems like it takes a lot of work to take WebOS and do something. Well, nobody's going to buy just WebOS unless they want the patents. I agree with you there. But somebody might be willing to buy the desktop and laptop division of HP, which is high selling, very well liked. You know, I mean, they, they've had their problems out there for sure, but it, it, they, they sell high volumes and say, you know, we can, we can increase the margins on this. Uh, for, L Lenovo just had their earnings and, uh, and their earnings were 108.8 million of net profit. That's compared to 500 million from the personal systems group of HP. So HP's five times as profitable as Lenovo, but Lenovo is surging. For the quarter ending in June, 98% increase in their sales. So for a small company, that 500 million is very attractive. If you're like, this is all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut costs, I'm gonna lay off some people, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get very cost conscious. I don't have to support HP Labs. I don't have to support all of this, this other behemoth of a worldwide enterprise. I'm just gonna make consumer devices. I wanna buy this, this desktop and laptop business and the fact that it has web OS and I can, maybe I think I can make something out of it and sell some phones and tablets, that, that could be, that could be worthwhile to somebody. Do you think we're looking at another Lenovo situation with a, just a giant OEM buying uh, HP's pro, uh, PC business and then making a name based on that? Or do we think that it's going to be bought up by some other pre-existing company like a Dell or somebody crazy to say, okay, look, we're going to buy at this competition right now? Yeah, it's a good question. I, I think Google buys it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> More hardware for Google. I think Motorola is spun out of Google and then merges with a spun out personal systems group. And Motorola will only run WebOS. Actually, I do. I, I think probably right now, <laughs> given what I know, the, uh, the highest percentage chance is that HP spins out the personal systems group the way Motorola Mobility and Motorola Solutions separated right. and it's, it becomes its own company for a while. And maybe somebody comes along like Google did with Motorola Mobility and snaps it up later. It could be like, a Z, like even ZTE. They make cell phones in, yeah. in, in uh, China, I think. And th this could be a good time to get, if you wanted to get into the U.S. market, this is a very established brand. I'm sure they'll be That's able to use the name for a you while. Know, somebody might be able to, uh, to make an entry into the U.S. Like market. Like Lenovo. I mean, like nobody would be like, oh, yeah, what's the Lenovo ThinkPad? Slowly but surely, people are like, yeah, Lenovo ThinkPads are great. Uh, Captain Kipper reminded me, Paul Therott on Windows Weekly said, maybe they'll just spin it out and call it Compaq. Yeah, I heard and that joke all day. And then they'll headquarter it in Texas. And it'll just bring back Compaq. And that brought a little tear to my eye. I had a Compaq desktop. I loved it. It was a good little buddy. Started with a brilliant.com on it.
So you're rooting for this compact renewal? No, no, not, no, no love compact from love. either of you. I just no, never I'm, had I'm, one. I, HP, I get it. I'm so if I had one, I'd probably too. feel more nostalgic for old, old compact. Man. HP made compact their budget horrible line. So, I mean, the, the nostalgia is they've crushed it. I'm going to move us on to an IBM story. <laughs> IBM, you say? Uh, yes. Yeah, so, IBM. Speaking of old. With their, their <laughs> not only solutions, yeah. They're older. They make me feel young. Uh, <laughs> they, they of course, uh, not only do uh, solutions and cloudy stuff, but they also have IBM Research Division, which brings you things like Watson playing on Jeopardy. The latest development they have is a DARPA project. Those are the folks who brought you the Internet. Called Synapse, Systems of Neuromorphic Adaptive Plastic Scalable Electronics. What the hell does that mean? Uh, it is a prototype, actually two prototypes, of a neurosynaptic computing chip these chips have 256 cores, uh, and they each have varying numbers of programmable synapses. So the way a regular computer works, all of its gates are, are soldered down. You can't change it. The way our brain works, though, we can change pathways on the fly. That's how we create new memories. At least that's what a lot of neuroscientists think. And this programmable system can't you know, solder new connections as it goes, but it can, through a voltage a memory, so to speak, this is, this is very analogous, we're not talking accurately here, but just, you know, just relatively speaking, through, uh, through, through hammering the voltage, they can actually simulate, they can virtualize the ability to create new pathways in the chips. Uh, they integrate memory directly within the processors, wedding hardware with software in a design that resembles the brain's cognitive structure, which limits the data transfer speeds, but it allows for m p parallel processing, processing, multiple processes in parallel, the way the brain works. Yeah, I mean, some, some of the things that in these videos they discuss, IBM discusses, is that how, how what a brain can do, it, it's so low power, it's like one watt for a particular, using a bird as an example, when it had to fly through a very narrow, uh, I guess, pathway, to actually move its wings and to do what it has to do is so low wattage, and it's actually so slow in a clock speed compared to a processor, but it, it, it can handle so much more processing at the same time because it's parallel. This is the kind of stuff they want to use eventually in the long term for something. The example they said was an airplane traveling 1,000 miles an hour in a 10-foot hangar, which is obviously not physically possible at this point. But that kind of, of, of precise it's, movement. It's like you, you give up speed for precision. Mm -hmm. So this idea of huh. you're running all these parallel processes and the idea of like how the human brain works, you're walking down a sidewalk just processing light and turning it into all kinds of information. To do that in a computer, if they're saying 20 years from now, you'll probably see something like this in a device for us. But DARPA and like military applications probably, you know, the next 10 to 15 years. And they have tested it. Um, there, there's uh, some actual, uh, some tests. This is not just theoretical stuff. Prototypes have already demonstrated the ability to navigate, recognize patterns, and classify objects. So the stuff works. They're just trying to make it... A, not use as much power. They want to make a smaller, low-power, more efficient version of it. Uh, and, and they want it to be able to, you know, fly planes at 1,000 miles yeah, well, an hour through barn doors. Well, I, I, I could imagine this in a car. Like, if you can identify, okay, that's a person, that's a speed bump, there's a big difference right there. If you can actually make this decision, and it could be low-powered, it could be even a, be a very cheap device. Well, mm -hmm. cars can already do that. Right, but I'm but saying this is a different kind of processing. you're saying it would be cheaper and easier for the car to do that. Exactly. That's, the, that's what this technology could do in the long run. But it can, not just even cars. They, if this becomes low-powered enough, it could be it could be an aid to the blind, actually, if I think about it with this. Because it could be low-powered. You don't probably could use ambient energy. energy. We did discuss a, a mm -hmm. processor, I mean, a circuit that did that. So huh, this actually could be... <laughs> has some really interesting long range well, you, effects. Well, anything, I mean, all of these things you're talking about, you can do with regular chips right mm -hmm. now. Uh, but, but what this does is says, we can do more complex versions of that easier. We don't have to do so much on the back end to simulate the way the brain works. It, it would be more, it'd be more natural, it seems like. On the more, from, from the sublime to the mundane, AT&T has leaked a document, and Gadget has it, showing they plan on changing their text message plans August 21st, eliminating all the limited plans. So right now you can pay like $10 for 5,000 text messages or something like that. I can't remember exactly. But it doesn't matter because they're getting rid of all that. Starting August 21st, if you sign up for a new AT&T plan, you got two choices. $20 for an unlimited plan or nothing. And you just get charged the per text rate, which, by the way, is a usurious 20 cents per text or 30 cents for a multimedia message. Well, as somebody who is trying to get off texting in general and use... Just texting. Right. Not a particular type of texting. Well, SMS. Okay. 
and just go through a data plan. Um, I would probably, I mean, I'm not using AT&T anymore, but I was an AT&T customer for a long time using limited plans because I was like, I don't need unlimited because right. I can curtail you know my, I know my workarounds. You're not a teenager anymore. So this would really tick me off, except that I think I might actually go no plan at all and then just start saying, do not text me to my friends. Get a hold of me through Facebook Messenger, for example, or group me or a variety of other ways uh, that you can ping me. And maybe this Just is don't what we need me. to encourage the one non-SMS standard for interphone communications. Yeah, I wonder if AT&T is doing this because they know eventually everyone's going to move over anyway, so they might as well just get some more money out of unlimited plans. I don't know. They're just trying to move everyone to an unlimited plan and make a lot of and money. And make it, yeah. well, make money and simplify it for themselves. There is a $30 family plan, by the way. If you're on a family plan, you can keep an unlimited message plan. It just costs you $10 more. Uh, it's just usurious. Both both of these, the, the unlimited plan and the 20 cents per text. It's, it's ridiculous. Well, because, because sending texts are still using a technology that they have to use anyway. It's to ping the phone. So they found out they could put 140 characters, 160 characters over. Anytime, like this, this is a free service. It could be free if they wanted it to be. Casey Johnston at Ars Technica did the math. A single 140 byte message costs 0. 0.0002 cents. Not two cents, 0. 0.0002 cents. Meaning customers would have to send 11 million text messages a month to make up the $20 texting plan. Well, I mean, I could just see somebody taking the $20 plan and trying that out. Yeah. Just go for it. Just try, let's push, let's see if unlimited is truly unlimited with this. That's the other thing. I'm kind of curious. Like, can you actually flood this? Can you irritate at to the point where they're like, you're cut off? Not, a, not enough people would go through the trouble to do that. We set up an application for it to, to upset it. them too much. Now, granted, if I don't have a smartphone, I'm kind of stuck. I have to use SMS mm -hmm. because I'm limited on apps, That's right? That's true. But if you're on a smartphone, at this point, I'd say, maybe you should just do Google Plus or Google Voice. Mm -hmm. uh, and send all of your, and just give that out as your, as your texting number. And take all if of your, texts, in your area. texts through there. Well, it doesn't matter if it's available. You can have a, our phone numbers in Butler, Indiana for, for this true. show. And we are not. We're incorporated in Delaware. This is, in, this is like our show is everywhere. We exist in so many different areas. It's amazing. Shall we move on to Microsoft? <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> sure. Uh, Microsoft starts to uh, talk Windows 8 some more. Steven Sanofsky posting again to the Builders blog, the B8 blog, about how the Windows 8 team is organized. Now, Sanofsky is known for being very careful about his words. So, of course, everyone's parsing this very closely. Uh, he is posting all of the different organizations under the Windows 8 team by what they do. So he mentioned an App Store team. Well, that pretty much confirms what everyone suspected, that Microsoft is going to have an App Store in Windows 8. I mean, that's, that's not too surprising. I mean, we've seen previews about this, and it seems like it's going to be there. The only question really was... This is the first official word. Will, there be, will it be called App Store? And I think Amazon actually fought off uh, Apple for App Store. So it's a possibility Microsoft will call their uh, App Store App Store. Yeah, well, now you're really parsing it, because he calls it the App Store team. Maybe they would call it an App Store. or maybe well, they they were, They've been fighting that trademark for a long Windows time. Windows anyway. comes up with really weird names sometimes though but app store isn't too weird app store is well app store that was amazon's argument is like it's generic enough so that apple right. shouldn't have a problem with it because that's what it is i would call it the microsoft software resource center this would be more of a rival for the mac os 10 store rather than any sort of mobile app right store. well no this is for windows 8 right yeah. so this is on this is on your desktop uh they also mentioned there's a hyper v team which got a lot of people excited hyper v is the virtualization technology in windows server and the fact that it's listed under the windows 8 team made people say hey are we going to get hyper v in the regular desktop version of windows 8 so instead of having this whole problem of is this going, going to work with compatibility mode this used to work on windows 95 will it work you can just virtualize yeah because it's hyper v is a virtualization engine so it could that's one use it could be put to absolutely uh and and it could do all kinds of other stuff too no mention of a media center team there was a media center team for windows 7 there is not for windows 8. this doesn't mean they got rid of them they could be just folded into somebody else, but it's definitely deprioritized. Yeah, I would think, I mean, Media Center was a, a I'm like the only Media Center fan, I think, I, I know, offhand. And uh, you're the only one at this table. Yeah, I like Media Center. Anyway, the, the thing about it was they tried. Fanboy. Microsoft tried, I am a fanboy of Media Center. Microsoft tried it. Uh, the it dog didn't, food. It didn't work very well. And I, I bet it would be integrated into either their uh, Windows Media Player. Because it, it was a lot of overlap anyway, just to have a 10-foot interface and all the tiles that they're using, it's very Media Center anyway. 
So the fact that Media Center isn't broken out anymore versus the tile interface, which is similar, that's not surprising. I mean, I would assume it's still going to have the same multimedia capabilities. Separately, Win Rumors uh, reporting that an internal email allegedly from Intel uh, announced that generic product keys previously included with, you know, service release, pre-release builds of Windows would no longer be supported in Windows 8 pre-releases. Instead, people working with the new build would have to obtain new special product keys. So they're, they'd be locking down Windows 8. Yeah, but to what end? I mean, if they want people to test it, why would they care how many people get it? My guess is if they want to restrict a certain release to developers and not have it be a public beta, that they would they would do this. So you think this is only limited to the pre-release to the to the actual developers? The Windows 8 developer preview. Once it goes to the actual public beta, that probably won't be the case. Maybe, maybe not, or maybe they want to they want to track all these things uh, more strictly. I I don't know why they would go to the trouble to be to be honest, but they apparently are at least uh, according to this leaked email. I, it doesn't make any sense to me though. Like it, it, so, a few people who are really motivated to use your product, go out and get a, a hold of the, the pre-release and play around with it. Well, does Microsoft charge its developers anything per, per year to be a member of that? And so, and yes. So if a developer is just seeding out copies, they might be like, hey, you know what? You owe us money. Yeah, we see that your it. code it, is everywhere. This mm -hmm. doesn't really undermine no, the, the motivations for people to become a Windows developer, though. But okay, I'm yeah. just trying to figure out what they're That's, doing. That, that could be one of the justifications for it. I say it was good logic. Let's finish up with a patent story that is not part of the patent wars. Oh, okay. This is, in fact... A happy uh, patent story? Well... <laughs> <laughs> a happy patent story. I wouldn't go that far. Okay. Uh, the United States Court Girl of Appeals dream. for the Federal Circuit has rejected a patent on a method of detecting credit card fraud. The court ruled that you cannot patent mental processes. Actually, that's, that's a given. And they say that this qualifies under that. Uh, even if they are carried out by a computer program. Well, that's the new part. So you can't patent a mental process. The fact that I'm just thinking something is not patentable. However, uh, there have been cases in the past where if something could be done on a computer, that was a distinguishing factor. They say no. If it's a mental process, even if you put it on a computer, it's still a mental process, so you can't patent that. However, the court also ruled that there is a rule against not patenting math, but that doesn't apply. They just kind of went out and said, you know, in case you're wondering about this, we don't mean that, that you can't ever patent math. No patenting math doesn't apply if the math in question is complicated enough that, quote, as a practical matter, the use of a computer is required to perform the calculations. Now, in 1994, a federal circuit in, in a case called In Re Allopat allowed a patent on anti-aliasing. Uh, Tim Lee over at Ars Technica points out, but wait a minute, you could execute that anti-aliasing. It would be tedious, but you could execute it on pen and paper. So isn't that a mental process that even though it's carried out by a computer program, doesn't need a computer? You read the, you read the, the yeah, uh, I, decision here. So I, I sat so and I read the whole thing. Make some sense out of this. Okay, I see what Tim is arguing here, the idea that uh, it could be tedious. But I think in this particular case, in, in what is this, cyber, what are they called? Uh, I forget their names already. Cyber source? Cyber source versus retail decisions. In this particular case, and not Allopat, the patent was so broad. And it was the example they had in their claims was, f it's, it's about matching IP addresses to the location to determine credit card credit card fraud. In their example, they used four, count them, four IP addresses and location variables, which makes it look really easy. And actually, it is pretty easy. You can figure sure. out, okay, uh, for credit card fraud, if all these payments were happening in this particular area, and this is the IP address, well, if it's all the way on the other side of the world, maybe something's up. Uh, well, that, and that seems like you could just kick it out on that. Like, wait a minute. That was part of it. You know, uh, but the, but the, the judge went farther than that. Yeah, the judge went through every single claim and basically called this, this you're, you're trying to patent an idea. And if, uh, I know this doesn't sound like it's, it's true, but you can't patent an idea. You can only patent a process. That's a legal definition of idea. That's right. Right. So that confuses people. There's a, a there's a method of process that you could do for something like this, but the method of process in this case was something you could do in your own head effectively. Uh, it, what was the phrase they used? Let me try to get this for you guys. Uh, you can't patent abstract ideas. They're calling this, the court was calling this an abstract idea. So this, this was so broad. Actually, this, the real question is whether this will go up to the Supreme Court. This, if this cyber, uh, cyber source if their lawyer wrote up all their other patents the same way, as broad, like, they do not want to appeal this. 
They do not want to get all their patents invalidated. Well, right. Uh, in fact, uh, Tim Lee at, at uh, Ars Technica says that the Supreme Court not taking cases like in re uh, uh, what was it again? In re Alipat. Alipat. Yep. I almost said Apparat. That would be a party member of the Communist Party. In re Alipat. Because the Supreme Court didn't hear that, it actually ended up uh, kind of trumping some previous decisions from the 70s and causing some confusion. So the fact that the Supreme Court has now, in the past couple of years, seemed more friendly to taking on patent cases, it might, this might be a good candidate for the Supreme Court to look at and say, well, wait a minute, where is the line between something I can do in my head and something a computer could do? Because this case does not make it clear to me. It's, it, it, right. I think in the case they actually use something language if you could do it on pen and paper or pencil and paper. But, you could do, might, but as Tim points out, you could do agree. almost any That's computer the kind program of challenge on pen and the Supreme paper. Supreme Court might want to take a look at. They exactly. would say, what does that mean? Or should we, if we're going to even look at this, either they would approve if the Supreme Court chooses to even look at it. That's the first question. Will they? They could say no. And then this case well, yeah, stays away. Right. But the thing is, if they go and review this, they might tear that apart. What do they mean by pen and paper? They want to actually explain that. They can actually provide guidelines. So it, it would be a good candidate, possibly. I mean, Tim, Tim Lee's got a, some great uh, ideas of why this would be the case the Supreme Court takes a look at. Yeah, this, that, and that's the thing that you were explaining to me is like this, this is a fantastic case to kind of resolve a lot of these right. issues we've been dealing with. But the, the people who lost here may not be willing to appeal. Right, that's the thing. It's, it's, this could hurt them in the long run. So they might not even appeal. So we might even see this go up. All right. Well, anyway, I kind of hope it does go. I'm cheering for it. Go ahead and appeal. You'll win. <laughs> On to the news views. I wanted to keep playing. <laughs> ah, yes. Everybody's acquisition crazy these days, including Evernote. The company just picked up Skitch, a drawing app for OS X. Skitch used to have a $20 price tag. Not anymore. Evernote has made it freeware. Considering Evernote is cross-platform, expect Skitch drawing tools to be integrated into mobile and desktop versions of Evernote soon. I love this. I know. Makes Evernote cool. much better. Skitch comes in handy. Anybody who hasn't used it before. It's, Thanks, it, Evernote. It does come in handy. Thanks, Evernote, for uh, making it freeware. Uh, speaking of free stuff, the CEO of Sledgehammer Games, the current developers of Call of Duty games, announced via Twitter that Modern Warfare 3 will get free dedicated servers. Hooray! That means anybody can run their own server. That also means expect all kinds of exploits and cheats. Yeah, Modern so, Warfare you know, 3. With great freedom comes great responsibility. Great responsibility and great cheating. It's available on Steam. Modern Warfare 3 is. In case you had an itch to download a war game. Mm, is that what that is? Can you imagine that? Yeah. A Battlefield 3. The PS3 got a price cut, but there's another reason it got more attractive. For a fee, a quite large fee, PS3 owners will be able to watch NFL Sunday Ticket via the PS3 without needing a satellite or cable subscription. I mean, obviously you need an ISP. The package costs around $340 and gives viewers access to out-of-market games in HD. So if you wanted to cut cable but couldn't because of live sports, here's your chance. The PS3 also has access to the MLB, NHL, and a whole bunch of things like Hulu Plus and Netflix. So I don't have to have DirecTV or Comcast or anything nope, for this. Not an order. authentication thing. You pay them three hundred and forty dollars. No, I just have to get a PS3 so I can watch football. Just got a price I also have to like football for this to work. Uh, <laughs> All right. Yes. Everyone likes football. To the rumor mill. Oops. Ah! That's not the rumor <laughs> mill. Dang it. It was rumored to be. You you were able to get it. <laughs> it really really missed out earlier. It wanted to be <laughs> talked about. Uh, the Nexus Prime is rumored to be available to all starting in October. This would be the third generation of Nexus phones, and it would ship with Android 4.0, aka ice cream sandwich. Yum, yum, Nobody yum. Nobody brought me a plate of ice cream okay. sandwiches this time. Oh. Uh, why would anyone wait until October for this phone, Jason? Well, maybe it's 4.50-inch, 720p HD AMOLED display and 1.5 gigahertz dual-core processor would be why you wait. Oh. Never going to buy a phone. Ever. Well, we'll see. I might have this one. I might also have, like, five other ones. Maybe I won't buy one phone. Maybe I'll buy them all. You can wear them in a sash, like Chewbacca. <laughs> right. <laughs> You'll just become the phone man. Just <laughs> Velcro them to you. That's his thing. There have been rumors about the iPhone entering China circulating, but now it looks like it's not going to happen. China Mobile says it's had several in-person meetings like with one and only Steve Jobs to bring an iPhone to its network. The iPhone could work on China Mobile's 2G network, but would require a redesign to work on China Mobile's 3G network. So maybe iPhone redesign for China. Looks like it, it is going yes. to happen. Pardon my... Uh, French. Right. Pardon my Chinese. She was speaking in French. Because Chinese, it works so well for Nokia, Rim is reportedly talking to the music industry to introduce a music <laughs> service. 
The RIM music service would run on top of BlackBerry Messenger somehow. And according to CNET, RIM has already signed one of the big four and is close to landing two others. When can you expect this to launch? Testing could begin as soon as a few weeks. I can see the press release now. RIM comes out and says, hey, everybody, we've got our music. Sir. Where'd everybody go? Is it playbook? Guys? Guys? Cricket. Active Wikimedia editors in good standing are voting on a referendum deciding whether to implement a system for readers to conceal pictures that they would prefer not to view via their preference settings. So dirty pictures, disturbing pictures, you could just make them all disappear. Under the referendum proposal, potentially upsetting pictures would not be deleted, just shuttered. Violent and sexual images could be shuttered by any user. Other controversial images would require registration to disappear. So people use Google Maps to figure out how to get to places, obviously. Now you can use it to figure out what to wear to the destination as well. Google has added a weather layer accessible from the upper right corner of Google Maps that lets users get current weather conditions and five-day forecasts for locales all around the globe. Users can zoom in or click on a weather icon to get more uh, of a detailed report for a specific area. You know, I'm going to be going to Las Vegas tomorrow. And now I know it'll be a cool 108. <laughs> Lovely. Oh, so like dry. It's not humid. Yeah, at hopefully. least it's a dry heat. Whatever that means it's going to be means. really comfortable. Enjoy. Thank the you. The BART Police Officers Association website has been hacked. Not too surprising considering the go-rounds BART has had with the group Anonymous. SF Weekly reports that the hack was perpetrated by a French woman who goes by Lamaline underscore 5MG. Reportedly, she figured out how to get into BART's website by a one-page PDF tutorial and was Googling quote, site colon bartpoa.com, in URL, in URL. <laughs> colon ASP. Uh, info, on, ASP. ASP. <laughs> info on 102 police officers were released. Oh, so, uh, yes. A tutorial, obviously. Uh, Hacker fun. On to the randomizer. Randomizer. New words have been added to the concise Oxford English Dictionary, and one of those words is its own celebration. Woot. Woot. Is also, it, is it, is it woot with an exclamation no, point? No, they spelled it wrong. Does it have zeros in it? It has, it has O's. But, but is zeros. it, but is it woot exclamation? No. Or just, it's W no zero. No zeros, no exclamation point. Does that is not to... a real word, Oxford. <laughs> Does it refer to the... <laughs> I like that your problem is not that they added woot to the dictionary, it's that they didn't spell they it didn't right. They didn't spell it the way you would spell woot. It doesn't I refer have a to the website? With that. Oop. Is it no. defined as that, as a once a day uh, deal thing? No. No, it's the generic term. And people are excited about this. You don't add brand names to the dictionary, I guess. You don't? No. No. You know this. Right. So we're, we're uh, excited also about... Also, retweet, wow. cyberbullying, um, and then some other non-technical uh, words like denialist, gastric band, mankini, and jeggings. Did hashtag make it, make it this year? You know, it, what makes me... And I don't know if hashtag's in there or not, but what makes me uh, pleased... Not pleased. It makes me laugh is I posted this up on Google+, Plus and a bunch of people are like, this is stupid. Oh, I can't believe they put it in the dictionary. I'm like, the dictionary is a collection of words people use. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with putting mood in there if a bunch of people are using it? That way, if I see it, and I'm like, what the hell does that mean? I go to the dictionary, I get a definition. Isn't that what a dictionary is supposed to do? Yeah, that's what a dictionary does. I don't yeah. know why people are excited to see it in the dictionary, though. They, they, it's more like they're upset to see it go in the dictionary. Well, it's the like once it gets in the Oxford Dictionary, now it's official somehow. It's like now king, everybody's going to be using the it. The king has deemed it. <laughs> what does Merriam-Webster think about this? I don't know. I don't know if Merriam... And this isn't the complete OED, by the way. It's the concise OED. It makes a difference. Woot. On to the calendar. Cyberbullying. Bling. HP. You know that old Hewlett Packard? Never have heard forgotten of Ever heard of them? I'm going to tell you a little bit of something about them. They were incorporated on this day in 1947, I which was eight whole years after the company started in just a little garage. For the anniversary, they just broke the company way the heck up. That's right. Okay. Exactly. Well, they haven't yet. They're just per pursuing, right. They're pursuing strategic, strategic alternatives. alternatives to running HP the way it was. Got right. It. Strategic alternatives like offering the HP Touchpad 64 gigabyte model in France. Hey, get it while you can. With a dual core 1.5 gigahertz uh, Snapdragon processor, a white finish, and a uh, 600 euro price. Now we know why it's so quietly launched. That's right. <laughs> French people, get your touchpad. Nokia has released a major software update to Symbian today, so you can enjoy a revised UI, new keyboard and portrait mode, some other improvements as well. Good, good to know. Anonymous is planning yet another live BART protest. That's, of course, Bay Area Rapid Transit. Monday, August 22nd, 
at 5 p.m. If you will be commuting during that time, you might want to <laughs> uh, take this seriously. And well, fi- I think the rest of the world is is is, is going to be interested in whether they shut down the exactly anything. If you, yeah. yeah, if you if you're commuting, or if maybe or maybe not, people. you can email us and tell you tell us if everything's working. Most people in our audience probably aren't commuting. That's my guess. Probably not, unless they are. Google gives itself until February 15th, 2013, for what, you might ask, to get that Motorola deal all wrapped up nice and tidy. So this is the, uh, after which they would have to pay that $2.5 billion exactly. reverse, reverse breakup, breakup fee. fee. They've got a year and a half. Got some Woo, time. twit. What's, uh, what's that? We got some swag, new swag. Oh, that's really cool. Microfiber. For Leo to, called it a glasses clean off our cleaner spectacles. on Windows Weekly, so I, I assume that's all you can use it for. Uh, you can also use it to clean okay. an iPad. That's uh, right. Or a touchpad. You didn't say that. Or a Zoom. So I don't think you can use it for that. I don't think it's an approved or Galaxy use. Tab. Oh, you know what? Why don't you lighten up? <laughs> All right. Well, lighten up and read an email from Paul. <laughs> Paul, thanks for emailing, along with the several other people who emailed the same theory. Uh, listening to Wednesday's episode, I can shed some light on why HP is ranked so high in web visitors. Working in the tech industry, I'm always going to HP.com to get the printer drivers. I'm sure the tech support driver downloads account for most of those hits. I manage printers for an enterprise, and I hit what, and I and I go to maybe what, HP's website easily a hundred plus times a month. And we are relatively a small company. I don't, yeah, I don't know if Comscore, if that fits in the way Comscore surveys or not. But even if it's just, you know, Comscore doing a random sample, probably people are going there to look at drivers. And someone uh, suggested in another email that maybe they uh, have HP uh, computers that have a, a HP.com as a default. Yeah, that setting wasn't in the theory. That's yeah. what they do with their machines. So well, the theory was that that might. Oh, yeah, that, that could be why. The, yeah, uh, so you got that in printer drivers. It certainly doesn't hurt. Another email from Craig. In episode 305, and as other times as well, I'm sure, Sarah Lane, that's me, mentioned trying to move away from email. Yes, Craig, you're right. So my question is, what would you have it replaced with? You mentioned Facebook Messenger, but that's a closed system, not to mention the fact that you need to be logged in so they can track your every move. Uh, I don't have too much of the logged in issue with Facebook, Craig, but you're right. It is very difficult to move off of email entirely I don't Especially with the cost of text messaging these days. <laughs> exactly. What are you going to do? But yes, I, I actually do think that shorter messaging systems in an everyday use uh, make a lot more sense um, to get a point across to each other than emails do. For example, my mom asked me yesterday via email while I was busy and at work um, about someone's address because she wanted to, I don't know, send something to an address that I have and she didn't. We're both logged into IM. She just needs to ask me and I can get the address and cut and paste back to her rather than going into my email and sort of composing more of... There's just something about email that I, 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 I see that it's necessary, but I think it is abused with all the other tools we have now. Now, some people don't use all of those other tools. So I'm not saying it's wrong to use email. I'm just saying for most of my technically inclined friends, we don't need to have this long email thread about where the next barbecue is going to be. Let's just create a Facebook group or create a circle within Google+. It works better. It actually is more efficient for, for a lot of activities that email is still used for. What about just not talking to some people anymore? Because if, if they only get to you by email, you just write them out of your life. Well, but that's the thing is like, I, I don't actually think that I could shut off email and not miss out on certain stuff because sure. I do have people in my life who they're only going to email me or call me and that's it. They're not going to use any of this other stuff. But if they call, then you'll still answer then the phone. Then it will go to voicemail. Yeah, because you don't answer the phone. All yeah. right. Uh, let's thank our uh, sponsor, new tech maker of the new TriCaster 850. Uh, Jason, do you have a, uh, a demonstration of what the TriCaster 850 can do? Oh, and you're uh, you're gonna put me on the spot like that. Um, well, I'll just go ahead and choose this one transition. <laughs> that's that's all I had here at a button press. Oh, okay. That's I like not very it. No, impressive. It's, it's really nice. Yeah, but see, I can do it really fast. See, well, one of the things too is that uh, you can you can switch between people, and like you don't world have to you don't have to effect. change the CG at the same time as you switch. Well, that's that's the more useful thing. That is, is a, that I can do that. It honestly, it's it saves me so much headache compared and to it's the a old version. Twenty-four model. channel system, so mm-hmm. you're not sitting there like. Whoa. You know, one thing that's really cool that it can do. 
that people might not know of. You can, it takes a total of eight camera inputs. You can set it so that it records each of those camera inputs independent of each other. ISOs. So even though I'm switching the show live, I could then go in and correct uh, based on all of those eight independent channels. Or show later, us picking our nose to. when we thought we were off camera. Yes, but I usually choose to leave that on there. Yes, I know. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, you can use the TriCaster for desktop or portable production. Find out more at newtech.com, N-E-W-T-E-K.com. Also, big thanks to our Redditors at technewstoday.reddit.com. They're the folks who give us ideas for stories, and you can join them by submitting stories or voting things up and down. Uh, thanks to Cletus, CompFixer87, SP Sheridan. I actually got to say his name right. PC Guy 8088 and more Gadget Geek Girl in there as well. Technewstoday.reddit.com is the place to go. Bricks.twit.tv is another place to go if you'd like to have your name, your message, your, your name forever etched into the wall. I walk in and I see these bricks every day. Bricks.twit.tv is the place to go for that. Thanks, everybody, for watching this episode of Tech News Today. You can find us on the web at twit.tv slash TNT. Email us TNT at twit.tv or give us a call. Our number is 260-TNT-SHOW. See you tomorrow. That was a headbang. That was a headbang injury. injury. <laughs> yeah. Really? It's been a while.